Hello everybody! In today's lecture, we are going to learn how we can design a phased compensator for feedback control systems using frequent response techniques. A lead a compensator is a first order transfer function which has a zero and a pole. The zero dynamic has a time constant of t, whereas pole dynamics has a time constant of t times alpha, and alpha is a real number between zero and one. As you can see, uh, t times alpha is less than t, which means that pole dynamics is much faster than the zero dynamics. Okay, so if we like, uh, look at the action case of alpha when alpha is going to zero, we can see that g of cs goes to kc times ts plus one, which is indeed a PD controller. So from this perspective, we can see that a PD controller is an idealized version of a phased compensator. Okay. Uh, for this reason, the effects on transient performance is somewhat similar. Okay. And as you remember, we generally use PD controller for improving the like overshoot performance, setting time performance, but not for the directly using this that state performance. Okay. Good. So let's look at the uh, body plot characteristics of a phased compensator, which looks like this. Okay. So as you can see, a phased compensator is technically a high pass filter at low frequencies when Kc is equal to 1. Okay. When this is equal to 1, we have a 0 dB gain and 0 phase response. It's like an all pass filter in this range. And at high frequencies, we have a maximum magnitude shift of minus 20 log. Alpha, and as you remember, alpha is less than 1, so this is positive. And the phase again reached the 0. So we can technically use the phase compensator to design a very nice uh, high pass filter because at high frequencies it's a constant phase but like a magnet amplified uh, filter. Okay, but in designing as a controller, we don't use its low frequency or high frequency characteristics. We directly use its characteristics at the center frequency. Okay, a center frequency, this is the frequency uh, of the system, 1 over t times square root alpha. Okay, at this frequency, let's look at what happens. The phase it compensates reaches its maximum phase here. Okay, so exact phase can be computed using this simple formula, and you can look at the derivation in my lecture notes. Okay, so what you do is, based on the specifications and the characteristics of an uncompensated system, you can design phi max, which is the required additional phase that will be provided by the controller. And based on this, you can find alpha easily. Okay? And the next step is finding the time constant t. How we can do that? And in order to do that, what we need to take into account is this. Of course, it's adding a phase here, but also it is shifting the magnitude. And this magnitude shift is equal to minus 10 log alpha. Okay, so let's uh, remember what's important. The center frequency, the phi max, which is the phase of the lead compensator at this frequency, and minus log alpha, minus 10 log alpha, which is the magnitude shift at this frequency. We will need to use both of them to design a good or like a well behaved phased compensator. Okay, so let's solve an example to better understand the process. Okay, so in this case, we have a transfer function, g of s, but instead of explicit like transfer function, we are giving only the border plot, which is good because border plot is enough to design a very good compensator. You don't need to fully know the whole system. This is better in many cases because now we can use graphical techniques for designing the compensator or control. And the idea is designing a lead compensator such that there is no need to change the state performance, but the desired phase margin is equal to, or should be in between, 45 and 55 degrees. Let's say that my desired phase margin is approximately equal to 50 degrees plus minus 5 degrees. Okay, good. So, uh, how we need to do that? First of all, let's look at the phase margin of the original system and see what is the like additional phase I need to add, okay, which is also easy. Okay, what I do, as you remember, I look at the 0 dB line, it's crossing with the magnitude, which is my, which is here, gain crossover frequency. And as you can see, gain crossover frequency is approximately equal to 3 radian per second. 
Eight two gig uh, crossover frequency a little bit higher than that, which I will talk about in the next video. At this frequency, what's my phase? My phase is approximately here, and this is my phase margin of the uncompensated system. It is less than minus 160 degrees, which means that my phase margin is approximately equal to, let's say, 18 degrees, right? I think it's fair. Okay, so this is my original phase margin of the system. Okay, so what is my desired phase margin? Let's say it's equal to 50 degrees. So delta phi is approximately equal to 50 minus 80. Okay, it could be phi, but the problem is, is if I, as I told you before, because magnitude shifts can cause a change in the gain cross of frequency and it causes in general. This may not be enough. For this reason, what we do is, without continuing to the design process, we add an initial small phase margin, technically it's another margin, such that we can cover some of the possible errors that can happen in the future. Okay, so let's just, in general, this epsilon is selected as 5 to 10 degrees, it is enough for most systems, sometimes you may even need 15, and in this case 5 is enough, you will see that, so delta phi is equal to 50 minus 18 plus 5, which is approximately equal to 37 degrees, okay, good, so this is 37 degrees, and this is equal to 5 max in our phasic compensation, okay, so let's go, okay, so 5 max, is the maximum phase that is achieved with a phase of compensation and it's happening at center frequency. Here what I did is, instead of using the formula, I provided a, a set of different phase compensators for different alt values, starting from 1 over 16 to 1 over square root of 2. So what we can do is, instead of using the formula, we can pick a compensator which can satisfy our need. Okay, so this is 10 degrees, not enough, 29 enough, this is close to 9 enough. Okay, oh, this is good. At this the compensator, which has an alpha is equal to 1 over 4, which is good, it has a nice number. Alpha is equal to 1 over 4. As you can see, the phi max is equal to approximately 37 degrees, right? Okay, very good. Phi max is equal to 37 degrees. So we already designed alpha. Now we need to design t, right? Because we choose alpha using a book, technically, or a catalog. Okay, but you need to also look at the magnitude of this compensator at the mid frequency. So at the uh, like uh, high frequencies, it has a, a magnitude of 12 dB. So at low frequencies, it should have a magnitude of 6 dB, right? Yes, exactly. So magnitude shift, the uh, M of compensator at this point is equal to MC 6 dB. Okay, so what we can do is, instead of like looking at the whole phase structure, at this point we may assume that a phase compensator has like this kind of phase characteristics, okay, it has a peak at this point, but it changes the magnitude everywhere, let's say it shifts the whole magnitude big 60. Of course it's not true, but in order to use the process we can think like this. Okay, good. So, let's remember we choose alpha as 1 over 4, which is good, and at this point, we achieve a phase of 37 degrees at the compensation. Okay, so what we need to do is, where we locate the whole center, because we achieve this frequency at the center. We can locate it at the original gain crossover frequency, but the problem is, when we add the phase of compensation, this won't be the gain crossover frequency. And our 37 degrees may not be enough. So what we do is, we predict the future gain crossover frequency by looking at the crossing to the not 0 dB line, crossing to the minus 6 dB line. Because it's adding a positive 6 dB phase. So if we find a point which crosses with the 6 dB line, let's assume that it's here, then it will be shifted with 6 dB and if we reach the zero point, it will be the mean gain crossover frequency, right? Okay, let's clean and let's do it again. Okay, 
So 6 dB, let's pick the ruler. 6 dB is like the, at the center here. Okay, it's good. Somewhere here, right? It's not a big deal. Okay, this is good. So let's use this. It's terrible, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay, as you can see from this like graphical computation, we can assume that my new gain crossover frequency, omega g prime, is approximately located at 4 radian per second. Actually, this is more than 4, but this is a graphical design and we can be okay with small errors, right? In actual, we have. So let's pick this as our new gain crossover frequency. Okay, and now what is next is, let's go back to uh, the phase that compensates body blood. Okay, let's locate this center at four radian per second, right? It's very simple. So we already computed alpha. The center should be at four. So this number should be equal to this. So let's go here. So technically, 4 should be equal to 1 over t times square root alpha. And square root alpha is simply equal to 1 over 2. So t is equal to, as you can see, 2 over 4. So it is equal to 0 0.5. It's super, right? So we design alpha. We design t. Let's do it. So our g c of s should be equal to 0 0.5 s plus 1 divided by uh, 0 0.5 1 over 4. Look, I said let's change it. I like the. Okay, no problem. Okay. Or 1 over 2. G C of s equal to 1 over 2 s plus 1 divided by 1 over 8. S plus 1. This is our control. So we are technically done with the process of designing the compensator. However, in general, especially for phase the compensator, it's always good to check if this compensator can satisfy the phase margin at this new gain crossover frequency. Okay, let's do that. So we already know this. So let's go here. Okay, so what we know is uh, at 4 radian per second, okay, uh, we have a magnitude of 6 dB and phi of 37 degrees. Okay, so, but what we didn't check is what is the original uh, frequency, what is the phase of the original system to look at the phase margin. Okay. So at 4 radian per second, we know that it's approximately here. This is approximately equal to, let's say, 60 minus 6 dB. This will be canceled with the magnitude shift of the phase compensator. This is fine. So we will add a 37 degrees of phase, but let's look at the phase here. So we look at the ruler. So it is somewhere here. Okay, so if you remember, our original uh, gain crossover frequency was here, so we were here. So the original system's phase was here, but now we are here. So what is the phase margin here, as you can see? So if we don't consider this, it is approximately equal to what? Say it is less than 15 degrees. So I think it's even less than 14. So phase margin of the compensated system is equal to, I guess, 13 degrees plus 37 degrees, which is equal to 50 degrees, right? It's great. We achieved the center of the region. Uh, and this is like, as you can see, 5CS is in between 45 to 50 degrees and everything is fine. Okay, but we, let's look at this here. We achieved 50 degrees, but we achieved this because we added a 5 degree compensation at the beginning of the control. If we don't add that, it should be like 45 degrees, which will be on the edge. It will be still okay. 
but we will be like at the critical point. For this reason, if you remember, I think I did it here, this epsilon is important, and 5 is generally the minimum that we add. Sometimes we add 7, even 10. Okay, good. So, I think it's okay in terms of the phase margin. So, our controller seems to be increasing the phase margin of the system. Now, you may ask, so what happens if we draw the step response, or what happens if we draw the root dogs? Okay, so this is the result. Uncompensated and compensated systems, step responses. Blue is the uncompensated or original system, and red is the new compensated system. As you can see, our compensator improves both overshoot and setting time performance. Overshoot from 60% to 20%, it's like the three times better. Setting time, 7.3 to 1.2 seconds, which is also much, much better. Okay, so in general, we can see that the effect of phase margin is very good in terms of transient characteristics, both for the overshoot, setting time, and the rise time. Okay, so I will tell you uh, something more, but it would be more clear when we clear the phase compensator. This uh, improved in the overshoot is directly related with the phase margin of the system, but phase margin is not directly related with the improvement in the setting time performance because setting time is generally not related with neither gain margin or the phase margin, but it's generally related with the gain crossover frequency. In general, if you can increase the gain crossover frequency, which is the like bandwidth of the system, you improve the setting time performance, which will be diminished later. So the uh, improvement in setting time is a secondary effect of phase compensator. We improved the phase margin, so we improved the overshoot, but because of the improved or like increased uh, benefit of the system, as you can see, setting time is also much, much better. Okay, this is the end of uh, my presentation for today. So what we did is we designed a phase compensator only using graphical techniques. I didn't use any formula, as you can see in this lecture. In the next video, I will only use analytical techniques, no plots. So indeed, what you can do is you can mixture of do two techniques again, right? So you can use both the body plot or approximate body plots and some of the four plots, or you can just do uh, one of them. It's perfectly fine as far as you can satisfy the phase margin of the system.